Hello and welcome to the Monday, March 13th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. We got a couple of uh, United Storm Center diaries to catch up with that were published over the weekend. Let's start with a Guy. A Guy posted about a uh, as an uh, rat sample so uh, simple remote access uh, trojan it arrived as a bill payment uh, invoice i believe in uh, spanish maybe portuguese and uh, well uh, he published the indicators of compromise like uh, host names ip addresses and such uh, that this particular malware connects to and Xavier came across a uh, Mirai payload generator. So this is how you basically would add a new host to the Mirai botnet. Mirai has been going around for quite a while. Uh, Xavier points out a diary from back in 2016 when we first discussed it. Remember, it was sort of the first one that sort of really very aggressively scanned for a Telnet and SSH servers. Since then, the number of Mirai uh, versions has uh, really exploded with uh, new exploits and uh, new little tricks. Well, uh, this Mirai payload generator kind of shows you some of the flexibility that uh, this uh, botnet has right now. And finally, probably the most interesting uh, diary from this weekend is one by Xavier, where he looks at a browser hijacking a script that... Uh, basically does obfuscation, not just by obfuscating the code itself, but also by using various different technologies. It starts out with good old Visual Basic script, but then also uses a PowerShell. It uses some C-sharp code that's sort of being compiled here as uh, the script uh, runs. So all of these different technologies likely are contributing to a fairly bad recognition rate by anti-malware for this particular example. And with OneNote files evolving in such a big threat in the last couple of months, Microsoft is catching up with it and it announced now that starting in April, there will be additional features that uh, will at least warn users if they're about to open a malicious OneNote file. The exact nature of how this will work uh, is not clear. It's uh, just sort of a little one-liner that they published here as part of their uh, roadmap. But essentially, if you open or download an embedded file in OneNote, and that's what usually happens here uh, in these malicious OneNote documents, that it's not really that much the OneNote content itself, but embedded files within the OneNote file that cause the problem. So if you open or download an embedded file, then you'll receive a notification and uh, well, uh, hopefully that'll prevent users from just clicking OK and running the malicious uh, payload. Certainly a step in the right direction. Remember that Bleeping Computer also published a little uh, a write-up on how you can use uh, registry settings, group policy options in order uh, to block some of the embedded uh, content in OneNote. So that's another option that you already have available if you don't want to wait till April. Well, and as we are gaining some new security features, some old security features are being retired in part because they no longer are needed. And the example here is the Chrome cleanup tool. The Chrome cleanup tool uh, will be uh, retired in Chrome 111. And if you're not familiar with the tool, uh, well, it was introduced back in 2015 and allows you to, for example, uh, find unwanted software, also uh, recover from unexpected setting changes. While it was very much needed and often used in the beginning, uh, lately, according uh, to Google, it has been used less and less. And they quote here that this last month, only 0.06% of Google Chrome uh, cleanup uh, tool scans uh, were actually detecting some unknown, unwanted software. And they're saying that basically things like, for example, uh, Google Safe Browsing and uh, non-Google uh, uh, malware scans such have ca caught up where uh, this tool is less needed. On the other hand, there are new threats like cookie theft and such where uh, this particular tool doesn't really play a role. So that's why they figure, hey, no longer needed uh, and it's uh, going to be uh, removed. 
Well, and that's it for today. Thanks and for listening. Thanks for everybody recommending uh, this podcast. Always happy to see if someone is asking uh, for, well, what podcast to listen to and if uh, listeners are actually then responding and are recommending uh, this podcast. So thanks for that. If I missed this story, uh, please let me know. I am listening and I am often including stories that uh, listeners did send me, for example, via our Slack channel, email, uh, whatever uh, way works for you. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.